If Putin announces mobilization, it could end badly for him. But even without it, the Russian army will not last long. Oleg Zdanov believes. Oleg Zdanov's opinion can be found in the video on the YouTube channel. An officer of the Ukrainian Armed Forces described the economic situation in Russia as a sign of the crisis approaching in Russia. One can name the fact that the largest construction company, Samolet, went bankrupt in the Russian Federation. This indicates that the economy can start to fall at any moment, so I do not think that Russia has any prospects. I don't think Putin plans to announce mobilization in the near future. Why is Putin so stubborn? Because for him, it would be a death sentence. It would cause such a social explosion if a wave of mobilization were to be announced now against the backdrop of the economic decline that is taking place in the Russian Federation. Oleg Zdanov explained. After this, the military expert added, on the other hand, if Putin does not declare it, then the generals can no longer guarantee success on the front line. As an example, I can cite the Kursk region. Belosov promised Putin, although they say it was under pressure, that they would be able to liberate the Kursk region before the new year. And today, news comes from the swamps that the new deadlines are March or April. At present, Russia is likely to keep banking on various coercion tactics to bolster its military manpower in Ukraine, experts say a strategy that has proven effective at ensuring a continuous supply of fresh recruits to the front lines. In fact, though the Defense Ministry said it had met its stated quota in the fall of 2022, mobilization, the mobilization process itself has never ended, said lawyer Alexei Tabalov, the head of conscripts' rights, NGO Shkola Prizivnika. If we define mobilization strictly according to the law, then it means conscription of citizens listed in reserve for military service. But in a wider sense, mobilization is simply the recruitment of soldiers for the front lines. Tabalov explained, when the Kremlin first announced the September 22 partial mobilization, officials didn't think about the consequences and went head first, Tabalov told the Moscow Times. Now, after facing the public backlash, the resistance and the resentment, the authorities are acting in a more skillful and calculated way, sending to the front line those who want it and those who can't refuse. Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, having become embroiled in a war of attrition in Ukraine, has found himself in a trap. On the one hand, he urgently needs a new mobilization to continue the aggression. On the other, he has no resources for it. This was reported by the Russian associate of the Czechist Igor Strelkov Z War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov. The propagandist, having visited the combat zone, spoke about the colossal fatigue in the ranks of the Russian occupation forces. The troops are terribly tired now. It's obvious they weren't replaced since then, as they were mobilized. I saw this fatigue, Kalashnikov said. He specified that people need to be replaced with fresh cannon fodder, but the Kremlin is afraid to decide on mobilization. And there are more than enough reasons for this fear. There are no resources for a new recruitment of soldiers. This whole undertaking could turn into a large uprising. If we continue the campaign, the war against Ukraine, then we need to conduct a new mobilization. If we call up 300,000 today, I'm not even talking about 500,000. In this system, it will be impossible to dress or equip them. Am I right? Or am I an extremist? If we cannot supply the active army with everything it needs now, then calling up another 300,000 will be a disaster. They don't want to call up reservists. They are trying to get by with big money, hiring for money. But this is not a solution to the problem. There are too few people. The propagandist said he specified that commanders are literally driving half-treated cripples on crutches to the front due to a colossal shortage of manpower. Recently, Russian MP Alexander Borodai, who stood at the origins of aggression against Ukraine, made a defeatist statement. He complained about problems in the army and the lack of clear goals of the war. Borodai made a bold speech in Moscow at the Congress of the Union of the Russian People's Organization. At the beginning of his speech, he complained that the majority of the population in Russia does not support the so-called SVO and wants it to end as soon as possible. There is a declaration of unity, but we do not have the unity in society. It is not true that it exists. We have very few of those who participate in the SVO in one way or another, somewhere around 5.7 million at most. The rest pretend that this is not their war. You there, hurry up. 
finish it already because we are all very tired of this war. This is the position of the majority of society, the Russian deputy said. He also noted the lack of a clear ideology in the Kremlin. Even the top leadership of the Russian Federation does not know what will happen after the war is over. Winning the 2024 presidential election, Donald Trump will likely pursue retribution against his critics and opponents. After securing the presidential mandate, he is perfectly positioned to punish individuals against whom he has previously issued threats, political media outlet reported. For years, Trump has peppered his speeches and social media posts with vengeful calls for his political opponents. His critics and members of the media to be prosecuted locked up, deported and even executed. In the waning weeks of the 2024 campaign, he escalated those promises of retaliation to a fever pitch, Politico reported. Some of Trump's advisers believe that he is more likely to act on these threats during his second term of presidency as he won't be inhibited by the need to run for re-election and due to immunity granted to ex-president, the publication warned. Thus, Politico gave the list of individuals Trump has specifically targeted during his speeches and who might be punished by Trump. Former President Joe Biden is on top of the list of Trump's potential targets. Politico reminded that Trump has called Biden corrupt and said he should be arrested for treason. In a speech last year, Trump pledged to appoint a special prosecutor to go after Joe Biden and his family. Next in the list is Vice President Kamala Harris, whom Trump has criticized for failure to control migration. In a campaign rally in September, Trump said Harris should be impeached and prosecuted over what he described as invasion of the US by undocumented immigrants. Former President Barack Obama is yet another politician who has been threatened by Trump. In August this year, Trump called for public military tribunals for Obama, whom he has accused of treason for FBI's surveillance of his 2016 presidential campaign over its ties to Russia. Hillary Clinton has also been under constant scrutiny of Donald Trump. Trump has called for Hillary Clinton's imprisonment over her use of a private email account while Secretary of State. Yet another name in Trump's list of retribution is former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In September, Trump suggested Pelosi should be prosecuted over her husband's sale of Visa stock a few months before the Justice Department sued the company for alleged antitrust violations. Trump has also issued threats against Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. In September, Trump accused Zuckerberg of a shameful plot against the president and warned, we are watching him closely, and if he does anything illegal this time, he will spend the rest of his life in prison. Other people who might face Trump's revenge are former Manhattan assistant district attorney Mark Pomerantz, former Trump attorney Michael Cohen, U.S. Capitol Police Lieutenant Michael Byrd, and Congressman Jamal Bauman.